If I asked you to describe your best friend, you might use descriptives like tall, or kind, or smart, or friendly. And if I asked you to describe your favorite place, you might say that it is warm, or clean, or quiet. And if I asked you to describe your favorite pet, you might say that she's fuzzy, and warm, and sometimes she can't hold her liquor. But if I ask you to describe a data set, what would you do? We're going to learn how to describe categorical data, the nominal and ordinal variables, using descriptive statistics in IBM SPSS Statistics. Well, first, I should tell you where you can find these data that I'm using. In the description for all of the videos in this series, you'll find a link to a Google Drive folder. Right-click on any data set to download it to your computer desktop. We can choose the dogtoys.sav SPSS dataset. It contains all of the changes that we made after importing the data from Excel, as described in the previous video. Double-click to open the data set in SPSS. Data are all of the facts and figures that we collect in our research. Now, typically, we code our data as numbers, although sometimes we use full words or maybe just letters. When we organize our data into meaningful groupings, we call them variables. If we use numbers in our variables, it is vital that we know what job each number is performing. Does that number two mean that this individual is in the second group, or that she came in second place, or that he scored two points, or that that movie is rated two out of five stars? When numbers stand in for names, such as number two being the number on your football jersey, or your student ID number, or indicating your belonging to the control group, which we coded as number two, then that number is nominal. Naming variables are called nominal data, and they simply define differences between groups. If, however, the number tells us when an event occurred, such as you came in second place, or this is your second visit, or your TikTok dance is number two on the top 10, that number is ordinal. Ordinal data are numbers that convey an order or a rank. Like nominal variables, ordinal variables indicate a difference between groups, but they also show a direction of difference. You can't compare nominal scores, except to know that the red team is different than the blue team, but with ordinal scores, you can compare within the rankings. The valedictorian is always first place in the graduating class. The winner of the race is always the fastest runner in that race. But you cannot compare between rankings. You cannot tell if the winner of this year's race is faster than last year's winner, or if this year's valedictorian is smarter than last year's. Both nominal and ordinal data are categorical data. They both define categories or groups. Now, if the categorical variables have an underlying order, then they are ordinal. If the categories are unordered, then they are nominal. Both nominal and ordinal data can be numeric, coded only as numbers. Some nominal data may be coded as letters or words, such as experimental and control for the research groups, or M and F for male and female. When nominal data are coded as words or letters, they are called string variables in SPSS. String variables can contain a combination of letters, numbers, or even symbols. Now, there are two more levels of measurement that we will discuss in the next video, and they are scale-level variables, interval and ratio data, also called continuous data, or quantitative variables. Scale data tell us an amount. They tell us how much of a difference exists. Let's look at our data. Which of our variables are categorical? We have four categorical variables in this data set. Three are nominal, 
and one is ordinal. Remember that the dog ID number is for identification, not for analysis. Now, why is breed nominal, but size ordinal? The three breeds are different, but they do not have an underlying order. Even though they are assigned as values of one, two, or three, you cannot multiply Chihuahua by Fuzzy Dog. The numbers simply tell us which category the dog belongs to. Small, medium, and large, on the other hand, are different, but they also have that underlying order that tells us their relative size. Large dogs are bigger than small dogs, even if we don't know by how much. We generally have three ways of describing data. Numbers, pictures, and tables. Now, obviously, we put numbers into tables, so those are similar, but the pictures we call charts or graphs. By numbers, I mean that we can describe our data with single numbers for central tendency, like the mean, the median, and the mode, or for dispersion or variability, such as the range or the standard deviation. The tables usually involve measures of frequency and percentages, and the graphs could be things like bar graphs or histograms. All of our analyses in SPSS are done from the Analyze drop-down menu, and all of our descriptive statistics are in the Descriptive Statistics sub-menu. We're going to learn descriptive statistics using the menus for Frequencies, Descriptives, and Explore. Each one is exceptionally good at creating specific numbers, tables, or pictures. You just want to know when to use each one. Crosstabs is used to compare two categorical variables, and it is a good place to do a chi-square. The rest of these are for a very particular skill set, and none of them do what you think that they should do. Turf analysis does not improve the quality of your lawn. Ratios are incommensurable, and the PP plot, well, that isn't what you think it is either. So let's just focus on frequencies and crosstabs for now. Choose frequencies. When we describe categorical variables, we want to know things like how many categories, how many in each category, which is the largest group within each category. We answer all of these questions using the settings in the Frequency menu in SPSS. Now, most of the dialog boxes in SPSS will be similar to this one. All of the variables in our data set are on the left. And when you want to analyze a variable, we move it to the box on the right. You can select a variable for analysis by clicking on its name and then clicking on this arrow between the boxes. You can also drag and drop the variables into the variables box. And because there's only one variables box in this example, you can double click on a variable name to move it. Now, this technique will only work when there is a single box into which the variable can go. If there are multiple drop zones, then you must move the variable by clicking on the arrow or by dragging and dropping it. Now, remember tables, numbers, and pictures. By default, SPSS will display frequency tables. To get pictures, click on Charts. Click on Bar Charts. And note that the chart values are set to frequencies. For our numbers, click Statistics. The only numeric measures that we should use with categorical data are the mode for nominal variables and sometimes the median for ordinal variables. Now, if you choose a measure of dispersion, it would be the range, but we won't do that here. Click Continue. We are now set up to get tables, numbers, and pictures. Click OK. The viewer pops up, showing us the output that we asked for. Let's see what questions we can answer. First, we see a summary of the variables in the box labeled Statistics. We have 50 valid scores for each variable, with no missing data. 
The median might help with interpreting ordinal data, but not so much here. The mode is the most frequently occurring score, but we will interpret the mode using some bar charts. The first frequency table is for breed of dog. Now this table tells us how many of the 50 dogs are chihuahuas versus fuzzy dogs versus retrievers. The total tells us that we have 50 valid scores. We see that there are 16 chihuahuas, 18 fuzzy dogs, and 16 retrievers. Now this is called simple frequency or counts. I could report simple frequency that there are 18 of 50 fuzzy dogs, but a better way is to use a measure of relative frequency, or even better, percent frequency. I can say that 36% of the dogs were fuzzy dogs, and 16% of dogs preferred a chew toy. Percentages are much easier to interpret and to compare than simple frequencies. The columns for percent and valid percent are exactly the same, because we have no missing values. If five data points were missing, then the percent would be based upon the total number of 50, including the missing values, whereas the valid percent would be calculated based upon the 45 data points that exist, excluding the missing values. Because of this, I recommend reporting the valid percent column unless you have a specific reason why you need to report the percent. Cumulative percent assumes ordered categories, so it is not useful with nominal data, and only sometimes useful with ordinal data. Using a frequency table helps us answer how many categories. We have three breeds of dogs, five types of toys, and three sizes. And how many in each category? 32% are chihuahuas. To answer which is the largest group within each category, turn to the bar charts. Describing our data with pictures, in this case bar charts, shows us the same information as the frequency table, but makes within-group comparisons much clearer. The height of the bars shows us which groups have more. The tallest bar would also be the mode for that variable. We can edit charts in SPSS by double-clicking on them. Some of the tricks that I'm going to show you require SPSS 17 or the 17.0.1 update. So for example, double-click on the favorite toy bar chart to open the chart editor, and the accompanying properties window. Click on any of the bars to select them. The first thing that I would like to do is attach the numbers from the frequency table to these bars, making them easier to interpret. With the bars selected, click on this icon to show data labels. Now I can see the simple frequencies. Note also that the data value labels tab is now open in the properties window. Remember that simple frequency is not as easy to interpret as percentages. Here, I could add percent as a label. Click Apply. I can remove count just as easily. Click Apply. By selecting the Number Format tab, I can change the decimal places to zero. Click Apply. Now I can see the actual frequency count on the y-axis and the percentages in the bars. To make this chart closer to APA style, I can delete the title or the footer. I could select Hide Grid Lines, and I select the bars and change their fill color to gray. If I want to create a Pareto chart, I can click on any bar and then select Categories in the Properties window. Tennis Ball is the tallest, followed by Chirpy Bird, and then Stuffed Monkey, Rope Bone, and Chew Toy. Click Apply. Now the bars are in descending order. 
To save the changes, simply close the chart editor. There's one other display for individual categorical variables that I'm going to show you, against my better judgment. I can't recommend using pie charts because they tend to distort the data and not display it very accurately, and they're hard to interpret. Bar charts are much better for displaying categorical data. But rather than going to the Analyze menu, let me just show you a shortcut. Use this icon to recall recently used dialog. Choose Frequencies to bring back our Frequencies dialog box. Click Reset to clear the dialog. Move over the Favorite Toy variable and deselect the Frequency table. Click on Charts. Now choose Pie Charts and set the chart values to percentages. Click Continue and OK. As with the bar chart, we can edit a pie chart by double-clicking on it. We could add value labels again. Close the window to save. However, compare this pie chart to the bar chart that we created and see which one is easier to interpret. So far, we've been creating descriptive statistics and charts for a single categorical variable at a time, such as favorite toy and breed of dog. Combining two categorical variables will help us to find patterns in the data. For example, what is the favorite toy of each breed of dog? To answer this, we will use another type of descriptive statistic called cross-tabulation. Go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Crosstabs. We will move the breed of dog into rows and favorite toy of five into columns. The rows and the columns will form the table that gives us the cross tabulation. Like other descriptive statistics, we can get a clustered bar chart, also called a side-by-side -side bar chart. Now click on Statistics. We're going to do a chi-square test, which will be our first inferential statistical test and the most common type of test used with categorical data. Because these are both nominal variables, we could get the phi and Kramer's V as measures of association. Click Continue. For cells, get row percentage and click Continue, and then OK. The cross-tabulation table tells you the percentages within each category or breed. So for example, 31.3% of Chihuahuas chose the Chew toy. The chi-square test is statistically significant because this asymptotic significance value is less than 0.05 which might seem useful, but we have a problem. All of the cells have expected values smaller than five, which means that the assumptions for this test are violated and the results may not be trustworthy. Let's examine the clustered bar chart to see if we can learn anything else. There are some patterns. We see that the tallest bars for chihuahuas are for the chew toys and the rope bone. The fuzzy dogs prefer chirpy bird and stuffed monkey. And the retrievers clearly prefer a tennis ball. But these categories are so clearly defined, maybe we can combine them into smaller, more useful categories. And we will do this by recoding variables. To combine these categories, we will need to recode our favorite toy variable. Because we want to keep our original variable, we will recode into a new variable. Go to Transform, Recode into different variables. We will use the variable favorite toy of five. 
we are going to recode into three options. We will name our new variable favorite toy three. For the variable label, favorite toy of three options. Click change to establish this as the name of the new variable. Now click on old and new values. On the left, you see various options for old values. We can change missing values into numeric values, or we can choose a range of numbers, begin with the lowest or the highest, and then recode values that we have not chosen. We can convert numeric strings to numbers or transform a variable. On the right, we set the new values. For this example, we will change numeric values to a string variable. This will teach you something new. Click on output variables are strings. Now chew toy and rope bone are both toys that get a lot of chewing. So we're gonna combine them by changing one to chewy, add, and then doing the same for three. Now, Chirpy Bird and Stuffed Monkey both make noise. We'll combine them by setting the old value of 2 as noisy and the old value of 4 also as noisy. Add. Value 5 will stay Tennis Ball. Add. Because Tennis Ball has 10 characters plus the space, set the width to 11. Otherwise, SPSS would cut our name down to eight characters. Click Continue and OK. To redo our crosstabs, use this icon to recall recently used dialog. Move the favorite toy out and replace it with our new favorite toy variable. All of our previous settings are still in place, so just click OK. Scroll down and take a look at the bar chart first. Chihuahuas clearly prefer chewy toys. Fuzzy dogs love their noisy toys. And retrievers love their tennis balls. What we'd really like to know is whether those apparent differences can be explained by chance or whether they are real. The answer to that can be found in our chi-square statistics. The significance values are less than 0.05 and the number of cells with expected values less than five are better. So in short, the likelihood of these results occurring by chance is very small. It seems that different types of dogs prefer different types of toys. Let's review what you have learned. You now understand that both nominal and ordinal data are categorical. Ordinal data have ordered categories, but nominal data do not. You know how to create frequency tables for individual categorical variables and which measures of central tendency and dispersion to choose. You can create a bar chart or a pie chart, the two most common displays of categorical data, and you know to use bar charts instead of pie charts if you possibly can. You now know how to recode a variable and change its variable type if you need to. And you know how to cross tabulate two categorical variables to look for patterns in the data and how to test those patterns using a chi-square test. Next time, we will learn how to do descriptive statistics for continuous variables.